Hello guys, it's Cardboard Rhino and welcome to One More Blade, right? Today in this preview video we're gonna learn how to play Alone by Horrible Games that is right now on Kickstarter. Alone is a sci-fi, survival and horror dungeon crawler. There is one single stranded hero who is trying to complete a quest and is found completely alone against one to three evil masterminds who are doing their best to stop him. So one player takes on the role of the hero and the rest of the players take on the roles of the evil players. The evil players always have the full map in front of them hidden behind a screen. Everything that happens during the game is recorded on the map by the evil players and it's their duty to keep it always up to date and use it to plan their strategy on how to kill the hero. The hero doesn't see the map but only sees the labyrinth where the action takes place. The labyrinth is a sort of zoomed-in view of the map and it represents only the parts of the map that the hero can actually see at a specific moment plus what is cached in the memory of their holo watch, the multi-purpose device they wear on their wrist. Everything that is present in the labyrinth is considered revealed and everything that is not is unrevealed. At the end of each round, parts of the labyrinth will be removed, simulating the cache of the holo watch being routinely cleared, so the hero must try to remember them to avoid getting lost. The third area of the game is the hero sheet, where the hero's stats are tracked. The hero can use the room sector spaces and the radar to make notes and keep track of various information like the layout of the map, the direction of noise they hear and so on. The hero sheet also features the reaction track where each reaction card played by the evil players is placed. It's a way for both sides to keep track of the number of reactions still available to the evil players and a way for the hero to have some clues regarding the evil player's strategy. In this video we're going to learn the rules of the standard game so you can play a randomized game but you can also use the scenario book. In the scenario book you will find the 12 scenarios of the campaign mode for Alone with each scenario moving forward an overarching story which unfolds through several chapters. The outcome of each chapter will influence the gameplay of the subsequent one as there is a branching storyline that can adapt to the decisions and actions of the players. Before you begin, either choose or randomly pick one player to be the hero and the rest of the players will be the evil players. Depending on which side you play, the gameplay is completely different. The hero can only see as far as their flashlight allows them, just a few sections of the map at a time. The hero gameplay is all about deduction, exploration and survival. The hero has missions to complete while using their wits to avoid the many dangers lurking in the darkness of the labyrinth and they win if the final mission is successfully completed. On the other side of the fence, hidden behind their screens, the evil players can see everything. The evil gameplay is all about planning their strategies and setting traps. Evil players will spawn creatures, place danger tokens and play reaction cards in response to the hero's actions. The evil players can only win the game by defeating the hero. After you have decided who's the evil and who's the hero, the hero decides which difficulty level you'll play. This will affect how many items they will start with and which rewards they will obtain upon triggering the final mission. Now let's start with the setup for the hero player. Place the hero sheet in front of the hero. The hero either chooses or randomly draws one character card and places it on the hero sheet. This will determine the hero's special abilities. Also, the hero declares the chosen difficulty level placing the corresponding difficulty token on the character card. You place the life and self-control markers on the 12 space of the corresponding health tracks and the round marker on the rightmost space of the round track over here. Each round has 8 turns and you place one turn token on each of these 8 spaces. Here you place 3 adrenaline tokens as the hero's starting adrenaline pool. The hero receives the item deck and places it face down and draws the starting items as determined by the chosen difficulty level and reads their effects aloud. The hero also takes the reference cards and the creature stats card is placed with the regular or green side facing up. In the game, when the round reaches the last space of the track, 
The game enters the nightmare mode at which point you flip the creature stats card to the purple or nightmare side. The subsequent rounds after this continue in the nightmare mode and the hero still has a chance to win but it will be much harder to confront the creatures. Last, before completing the setup, the hero needs to have missions. You shuffle the final mission cards and draw one randomly. You shuffle the blue mission cards and randomly draw one card. But make sure that it has a different room sector icon than the other mission. If the mission card has the same icon as the final mission, discard it and draw another one until a card with a different room is drawn. Then place it next to the final mission. You repeat the same procedure for the green mission cards and these will be the starting missions for this game. Place the three mission tokens on the hero sheet, one for each color on each corresponding room sector space. In order to win the game, the hero needs to complete the final mission. And in order to trigger the final mission, they need to complete one of the starting missions, which is considered mid-game and the hero receives the mid-game rewards according to the difficulty level. Now let's see how to set up the evil players. First of all, place the screen between the players and the hero so that the hero cannot see what's behind it. If playing with more than two evil players, choose or randomly pick one of the evil players to be the starting evil leader and give them the evil leader token. Randomly place two map sheets behind the screen. They must be placed vertically next to each other and you can choose either side of the sheets. This will be the map for the current game. Each separate map sheet represents a different level. One is the upper level and the other one the lower. They are connected to each other by the two sets of stairs present on each sheet. You have to place the stairs tokens of both colors. Only sets of stairs of the same color are connected to each other. The evil players randomly place one room sector token in each room sector space on the map. The evil players must now place the three mission tokens they received from the hero on the room sector tokens corresponding to the missions for this game as a reminder. The evil players may now swap the position of any two room sector tokens of their choice. This will be helpful to prevent the mission rooms from being too close to each other and to accordingly plan a strategy to hamper the hero's efforts. Then you place the hero miniature matching the hero's character card, the dice, the creature miniatures, the door tiles, the sector tiles and the room sector tiles where they will be handy for the evil players. The evil players place the hero token on the map in a corridor sector of their choice. This will be the hero's starting position and it's another important strategy element for the evil players. The evil players choose two of the four reaction decks to play with during the game and declare their choice to the hero. The evil players shuffle each deck separately, then draw cards depending on the number of evil players in the game. For the setup of this game example, let's assume there's only one evil player, in which case that player draws 10 cards and may freely draw each card from either reaction deck during the game. The Fury deck makes creatures stronger in combat and more aggressive. The Speed one makes them faster and it allows the evil player to react more often. The Terror makes scaring the hero easier and allows the evil player to control the hero's actions and the traps makes placing danger tokens easier and makes them more effective. The evil players place two creature tokens of their choice in two different sectors chosen from the mission room sectors and sectors adjacent to them, but they cannot place them in the hero's sector. Then they also place two danger tokens on each level of the map. Danger tokens can be placed in any sector, but again except the hero sector. Last, the evil players create the labyrinth by placing the sector tile corresponding to the hero's position in front of the screen on the hero's side of the table with the hero miniature on top of it and they place the compass next to the map so that the cardinal points are oriented like on the hero sheet. It will be used to keep the map and the labyrinth with the same orientation because the evil players will need to give information about stuff to the hero player and they need to share the same orientation. So now we're ready to move to the actual gameplay. The hero will be the one choosing the actions for the turns and the evil side can only do reactions. During each turn, the hero chooses an action to perform, declares it and then spends a turn token by flipping it face down. 
In normal conditions, you can only perform one action per turn, but you can also perform two actions in a single turn if you trigger bullet time, and thus spending one adrenaline token to make it happen. So each turn after you flip over the next turn token, you may do any of the following. You may spend one adrenaline token to recover one life or one self-control, but it can never go beyond the healing cap, which is the position of the round marker between your health tracks. You may also at this point discard a companion to activate their sacrifice ability, which is a one use option. And you may also declare if you're going to trigger bullet time. Then you declare the first action. At any moment after that point, one or two reaction cards may be played. The exact moment in time that each card can be played is written on them. Then you resolve the action and if bullet time was triggered, you declare the second action and resolve it. The reaction cards can be played by any evil player, but you can only play up to two reaction cards per turn and they have to be approved by the evil leader. The first reaction card is placed vertically on the first empty space from the left of the reaction track on the hero sheet. If the second reaction card is played, it is placed horizontally covering the next two empty spaces on the reaction track. If there are no empty spaces left on the reaction track, no more reaction cards can be played in that round. The amount of reactions played affects the number of danger tokens that remain uncovered at the end of each round and thus the amount of danger tokens the evil players get to place on the map before the new round. Reaction cards with the lightning symbol in the top right are instant reactions and they can be played during the hero's turn at the time stated on the card. The rest are played at the end of the hero's turn. A card is considered to be dangerous when the hero is in a sector with a danger token and then you can apply the second effect on the card. An allowed reaction card can only be played when the specific hero action is triggered or when the hero takes a certain type of damage. A standard reaction is any card played face down and can always be played as a reaction to any hero action. It is used to move one creature up to one sector or spawn one creature. You do not need to announce which of the two is being performed. After all the actions have been performed and the reaction cards have been played, then the turn ends. If there are creatures in the hero sector at the end of a turn, they attack automatically. Also, at the end of the turn, if a creature has completed a movement in a lit sector that is not the hero sector, the lights in this sector are switched off. The lights are an important part of the game as the hero gets an advantage when moving in a lit sector and that's mainly for two reasons. First of all, when fighting a creature in the light, then the hero has more chances of success with the dice, as we will explain later on. And secondly, some creatures' ability is lower in light conditions. Now let's have a look at the actions that a hero can perform during their turn. First action is the move action and it allows the hero to move to an adjacent sector. To move, the hero declares the direction, north, south, west or east, and if moving into an unrevealed sector, then the evil side reveals that sector on the labyrinth according to the map and all elements on it. Doors open automatically when adjacent to them, so there is line of sight through them and anyone can move freely through them unless the doors are blocked. During the move action, the hero may also block one adjacent door. This would be helpful if you want to keep away the creatures as they would have to spend extra movement to unblock it. If the hero wants to pass through a block door, they would have to spend their entire movement to unblock it. If you move from one level to the other using stairs, then you remove all sectors of a labyrinth from the level you just left, except the sector with the stairs. If you enter a sector containing a creature that wasn't already revealed, or a creature enters your sector from an unrevealed sector, you get scared and lose self-control according to the stats table. If you leave a sector containing one or more creatures, they gain an attack of opportunity, so each rolls one die unless you're in the light, in which case it's one die less, and the hero loses one life point for each hit. The dice have three possible results. This one is hit, this one is a miss, and this one is a miss as well, except for when the hero is fighting in the light, in which case it counts as a hit for the hero, and when there is a danger icon in the room or sector, which counts as a hit for the evil players. 
When a creature is spawned or moved, it creates noise. Then the evil players need to tell the hero from which direction the noise is coming, taking into account the route with the fewest movements and blocked doors. Next action the hero can do is explore. You may reveal up to two adjacent sectors in the line of sight and remove one danger token. Now let's clarify what the line of sight is. The line of sight starts from the hero sector and extends through all revealed sectors in a straight line in each possible direction. It is interrupted only by walls such as this curve, a door that is not adjacent to the hero sector, an unrevealed sector, and a sector on the other side of the stairs. So the hero declares the direction in which they wish to explore, the labyrinth gets updated according to the map, and the evil players reveal all sectors and elements just explored. Then we have the fight action which allows the hero to attack one creature in their sector. The hero declares the target and rolls two dice. To wound the creature the first time, you need hits equal to at least the left figure on the stats table. To kill it, you need to wound it two times, and to wound it a second time, you need hits equal to at least the right figure. So if I want to kill this parasite, I need two hits in one single attack, and it takes a wound token on the map. Otherwise, if it's less, the damage is lost. Then I need one hit in another single attack to kill it, or three hits in one attack in total to directly kill it in one attempt, if you could roll more than two dice like in this case of using this item, which you can use during the fight, and instead of the two dice, you roll three. When the hero kills a creature, you remove the miniature and token, and the hero gains an experience point by placing a blue charge token next to that creature type on the ability space. When the hero gains a second experience point, you turn the token over to the green side, and this ability is now unlocked for the rest of the game. When the hero takes damage, for each point of damage, you move the respective marker on the corresponding health track. If one is at zero and you take more damage of that kind, you must lower the other track. Another action you can do is the locate action, which allows you to check the distance to two targets on the map. The hero needs to declare two targets and they can be anything from stairs or specific rooms or a certain type of creature and so on. The evil players check the map and tell the hero player the shortest distance measured in sectors between the hero sector and each target and specify which level it is on. Unless asked for a specific target, the nearest one of that type shall be given. Then another action you can do is the scavenge action which allows you to draw item cards and to upgrade items. You draw one card from the item deck unless in a room sector, in which case you draw extra two items. You can only get the extra items of a room only once, so after you do, you place a charge token on the room space on the hero sheet. Unless otherwise specified, place three blue charge tokens on each item drawn. To activate the effect of an item, you discard a charge token on it, and you also have a limit of six items you can have. Then you may upgrade any items as part of the same action. To upgrade an item, take a charge token from another item with the correct matrix, flip it to the green side and place it on the required component space of the item you want to upgrade. You can do this multiple times during the same scavenge action. Last, there is the interact action which allows you to repair the light control units to switch on the lights and to complete missions. When a light control unit or LCU is repaired, it will switch on the lights in that sector and in up to two adjacent sectors in a straight line from the LCU sector. You must declare which direction you want to switch on the lights and you add a light token on each lit sector on the map. If the lights switch on in an unrevealed sector that would be in the line of sight, that sector is revealed. So these were all the actions the hero can do. Now let's talk about the creatures. A creature can be spawned anywhere on the map, but not closer than the minimum spawning distance to the hero, as shown on the stats table. There can only be up to four creatures per map level at the same time, and the types are limited by the available tokens. When a creature is spawned or when a creature ends its movement, it makes a noise and the evil player must tell the hero the direction from which it is made. 
Whenever a creature attacks, it rolls a number of dice depending on whether the sector is dark or lit, as specified on the stats table. The first number is for dark sectors and the second is for the lit ones. After the 8th turn, the round ends and you do the following. The evil players place on the map a number of danger tokens equal to the number of symbols still visible on their reaction track, but these tokens cannot be placed on the hero sector, nor in a line of sight. There can only be a maximum of 8 danger tokens per level on the map and 1 per sector. Then, all reaction cards on their reaction track are discarded to their respective discard piles. You remove all sector tiles in the labyrinth except for the hero sector, all adjacent sectors and all lit sectors in the hero's line of sight. The evil players replenish to their maximum hand size limit of reaction cards and pass the evil leader token to the left. The hero restores the adrenaline pool back to its current maximum according to wherever the lowest health marker is and flips the turn tokens back over. Then you move the round marker to the left. If it reaches the last space, flip the stats card to the purple side and the nightmare mode is triggered. This also means that at the end of each consequent round, the hero will lose two self-control until the end of the game. So this was Alone. I hope you guys enjoyed the explanation of the game. If you did, then make sure to subscribe to my channel for more videos and give it a thumbs up. And you can go to the description of the video to find the link to the Kickstarter campaign of the game. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.